Hi, my name is Peter Rich. I am a professor of instructional psychology and technology at Brigham Young University, and I work with Boot Up as an external evaluator to look at and assess the uh, effectiveness of their programs. So uh, what I want to do here is present the data for the 2023-24 school year from Walker County School District. Uh, if you look here, there was a, a survey that was given both at the very beginning and at the very end of teachers training. And I had four teachers take that at the beginning and four take it at the end, which is awesome. I uh, love to see uh, no attrition with all the teachers taking it. I will say, however, once I saw a little bit of information about the teachers, uh, I looked into it a little more deeply because you look at their experience teaching and initially it was a really young group of teachers. Uh, where they had, uh, or I'm sorry, not a young group of teachers, but a, a group of teachers who had 19 years overall teaching experience. So uh, on average, right there in the middle of sort of their careers, uh, but with about five years on average teaching the grade they're teaching currently, and actually quite a bit of experience teaching coding, uh, where you've got four years of coding. But the curious thing is that in the post-survey, those numbers... Um, went in the opposite direction that I would expect. Usually ex you expect all of those numbers to increase. Um, not as much as the uh, 5 to 17 increases though. So that's quite a, an increase. And the coding went down, which means that um, we have different teachers uh, filling out the post survey than the pre-survey. So I went and checked and sure enough, two of the teachers on the post were not present on the pre. So even though we do have four pre and four post teachers, uh, we do see that um, half of them are different teachers, which is what explains sort of the discrepancy in the pre and post demographic numbers. So this is what that ultimate uh, ending demographic looked like uh, in terms of their teacher roles. Two of them were classroom teachers. One of them was a STEM or a STEAM teacher, and the other was a technology or a computer teacher. So I like to look at the teacher experience. We ask a question, what was your confidence to teach coding before Boot Up PD? And what was it after Boot Up PD? Three of the four teachers answered this question. You can see they started off not very sure of themselves, uh, very slim, anxious and nervous. And somebody saying, I can learn this, I think. Um, and after those very same teachers, the one who said very slim says, I feel I have a great understanding of integrating code in my regular subjects. The anxious and nervous teacher became excited and positive. The one who thought they could learn it now knows they can learn this. And so you see good confidence here from the teachers uh, from the beginning to the end where they described their own growth and confidence to teach coding. So looking at their practice, what happened throughout the year? How often did they actually teach coding? Uh, you can see that three of the four uh, teachers actually reported teaching coding at least weekly. This is phenomenal. Uh, this is what I would say is the target where you're trying to make sure that you get kids uh, coding at least once a week. As they do that, they'll become more familiar with coding and be able to um, advance in their coding knowledge. So good patterns there in terms of how they teach coding. It's also important to look at the support network around the teacher. So we ask the teachers, uh, oh, I apologize, forgot one slide here. We look at how well they integrate coding with other subjects. As you saw, the, uh, one of the teacher's comments about integrating, uh, they're actually integrating really well. I have two numbers here uh, for each uh, subject. One is the mean, which is the average in the way that we often think of average by adding everything up and dividing it by the number of uh, numbers, by the number of numbers that we're looking at. Um, and you can see that's really good. You've got, you know, 1.8 or about two lessons in language arts and science, one and a half in social science and three in mathematics. So lots of good um, integrating going on. The reason I also report the median, which is another way of looking at average, is because sometimes, especially when you have a STEAM teacher or a dedicated computer teacher, they're teaching uh, coding and integrating it with other subjects a lot, which is phenomenal, but that might pull the mean up a little bit. Uh, if they do 10 lessons and three teachers do one lesson, it all of a sudden looks like everybody's doing maybe more than they are. So the median kind of weighs everybody the same and shows us uh, on average what's happening. The good news is on average with these four teachers, they are still integrating coding in every subject uh, with more or less at least a lesson or two. Um, of, uh, of content throughout the school year. At least that's what they reported this year. So good integration is going on amongst these four teachers. So returning to the subject of how well teachers feel supported by the network around them. You can see here we asked teachers on a scale of one to 10, how well supported they feel by these different players. Really, really well supported by Boot Up and their instructional coach and even the district. Uh, those are actually all really good high numbers. 
um, not feeling as supported by other teachers at their school, their principal, uh, and students' families. Although I will say often students' families is the lowest number, and this is on the high end of where I see people, teachers reporting how supported they feel by students' families. So um, that number is not phenomenal, but it's also not awful. Uh, above a seven is okay. Um, so I would look, if I were looking in terms of supporting your teachers and helping them to feel supported, look within the school, because that it looks like that is where the teachers are feeling like, okay, I, I'm doing this, my instructional coach is helping me, the district is supportive of us, but I'm not feeling that same support uh, locally within the school uh, from my colleagues and from the principal to that same extent. So that may be an area that you'd like to look at. Um, in the pre-survey, there's about 30 questions that get at teachers' beliefs about coding and computational thinking. These are based on six-point Likert scales where teachers are given a statement and they indicate the degree of agreement that they have with those statements. So, for example, questions about value all have to do with um, the value that teachers see in teaching kids coding. This is an important belief because if a teacher doesn't believe coding is important, they communicate that to their students whether intentionally or unintentionally and in so doing uh, they either excite or um, deanimate what's that word uh, uh, I don't know that word in English um, unexcite that's not, not the right word either but uh, they can actually damper students uh, interest in the subject if they don't see high value well the good news is teachers started off already agreeing um, the six-point scale you've got one is a strongly disagree two is a disagree three is somewhat disagree Four is somewhat agree, five is agree, and six is strongly agree. You can see that the teachers started off already agreeing on the importance of coding, that all kids should learn how to code, they'll need it for their future careers, it will help them be better thinkers, all of those things. Uh, and you can see they ended really high where almost every one of those four teachers uh, strongly agreed with those statements. So that's actually good growth in an area where there already wasn't much more room for growth. So teachers, these teachers are highly valuing coding. You can see in these other areas, teachers started off sort of halfway between somewhat agree and agree on their own computational thinking abilities. These are questions like, I can break a complex problem down to, into its parts. I can identify patterns and data. Um, those are the things that get the teacher's own computational thinking outside of the context of coding per se. And you can see here, teachers started off halfway between agree and somewhat agree, but ended up with all of them strongly agreeing that they could do these things now. So you can't get any higher than a 6.0. Uh, and that's really phenomenal to see the growth uh, here and the confidence that these teachers now have with their own computational thinking. And we see similarly amazing growth happening with coding and teaching, where teachers um, started off around the neutral mark, and there is no neutral answer on these questions, uh, but you can see there that's three and a half is about where the neutral is gonna be once you average out teachers answers in these questions and they're more on the negative side with coding these are questions specific to teacher self-efficacy with coding such as uh, I know what a conditional statement is and when I, when to use it I can identify different types of loops and when they're appropriate uh, questions about variables and functions and so these questions here you see teachers didn't really start off confident in that area but these teachers by the end are tremendously confident uh, my target is always to see if we can get teachers above that 5.0 level so the fact that they are near the sixth level is, is really um, fantastic. So really good growth there. The same is true with teacher self-efficacy for teaching coding. They started that in about the neutral state and ended that uh, halfway between agree and strongly agree. So really good growth across the board when we break it into these four areas. Uh, and when we ask teachers about their attitudes for coding, similar things happen here. So their confidence grew more than 100% where they started off not highly confident. And you can see here, they ended up actually really highly confident. Above a nine is phenomenal. Um, typically I'm aiming for above a seven, preferably above an eight for teacher's confidence. But the fact that it's above a nine uh, means that they're really confident now where they started off in the bottom half of their confidence. Uh, their excitement was sort of middling to begin with. So even though they saw high value for coding, excitement at a six is not very high to begin with. Um, and it, the excitement now is almost all the way to the top of the chart. Again, phenomenal growth there. Their anxiety wasn't uh, really present to begin with. Anxiety of three and a half on a 10 point scale means not much anxiety. 
Um, ending that at a 1.67 means it's almost completely gone. So any anxiety they did have to teach coding is pretty much completely gone at this point. So all of these things are speaking to the teacher's ability and confidence to teach coding has really grown and they're in a good place right now where they think that they are uh, ready to teach coding. So the last area that I like to look at is what was their experience with boot up? How often did they attend the, um, how often did they attend the, the trainings, the workshops, and how did they rate the different components of the workshop? So we see here, uh, on average, these teachers reported attending two and a half trainings and uh, both online and then another two and a half trainings in person. When we asked them what their preference was for online or in person, all of them said in person. So without a doubt, they enjoyed the in person. They described the reason for that is they like the interaction that happens in person. They're able to get answers to their questions they feel more quickly when it's in person. So we also asked teachers about their satisfaction on a one to five scale with boot up and you can see they rate that as a 4.8 out of five, which is high. Um, and then you can see here uh, how satisfied did they think their students were with the boot up curriculum. A four out of five is good um, in terms of that's where student teachers saw students not in the great range, but it is in a good range in terms of how satisfied they thought they were. But uh, the good news is um, teachers uh, did agree uh, that more of their students felt like they belonged in CS. Uh, and then the last thing we look at here is what's called a net promoter score. It's actually really hard to interpret this uh, reliably with just four data points. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna issue a word of caution before reading too much into this number. Um, but the way that the net promoter score works is you asked, you asked people how likely they are to recommend a boot up uh, workshop to a peer and uh, on a scale of one to 10. And those who answer nines and tens are considered promoters. Those who answer seven and eights are considered passive, which means they liked it, but they're not gonna go out and proselytize uh, the program. And those who are uh, rated as a one to six or on this question, those are considered detractors. So the way you get your net promoter score is you take the percentage of, of promoters, the nines and tens, and you subtract from that the percentage of detractors, the ones through sixes. And that gives you a net promoter score. Uh, so in this case, you had a net promoter score of 50%, um, which uh, happened because you didn't actually have any detractors, but you had two of the four people um, give a score in the 9 to 10 range, and the other two gave it in the 7 to 8 range. So that's why you end up with the 50% there. If I average all of those together, it's actually an average of 9 out of 10, which is a really good average there. So I think the mean average is a good indicator here to kind of get a sense for what the teachers from Walker County School District um, thought of the boot up training this year. And you can see here, they're highly likely to recommend it to a peer on average. So overall, it looks like it was a good experience for teachers. Uh, they grew in their um, confidence to teach coding more than 100%. They're excited to teach it. Uh, all indicators really are looking pretty good at this point. Uh, the only thing that I might, um, talk about and look into is uh, establishing expectations for how frequently teachers should be teaching coding in the classroom. The good news is 75% of the teachers who finished the study indicated that they were doing at least weekly and that's that would be my target personally uh, is that they do it at least weekly. Um, but the other thing is looking at that support and I know this isn't something that uh, you can directly affect but maybe this is something to look into is look at the support uh, that teachers feel from their principals and from their colleagues. That's an area where things were maybe a little bit lower than other areas. So that's it for Walker County Schools. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Feel free to email me, uh, but otherwise, I'll see you later. Thanks.